In this video, we're going to debunk seven common blood sugar myths that could be sabotaging your health, backed by the latest scientific research. You'll learn which so-called healthy foods actually cause major problems, the shocking new guidance on artificial sweeteners, as well as a simple tip to reduce sugar spikes by up to 30%. By watching this video, you'll gain the knowledge to take control of your blood sugar, boost your energy, as well as potentially improve brain function and mood. Plus, I'll show you how to get two free gifts to help you on your journey, so stick around for that. Okay, let's kick off with the myth that only people with diabetes need to think about blood sugar. This is dangerous thinking. Research suggests that a staggering 38% of the adult population in the United States has prediabetes or worse. It doesn't happen overnight, and by the time people get diagnosed with high blood sugar, many processes in the body have already become dysfunctional. The truth is, every person on the planet should understand how blood sugar works, whether you've been diagnosed or not. Blood sugar or glucose is absorbed from the food you eat. It's your body's primary energy source. However, too much sugar in your bloodstream leads to serious issues. So how does this happen? Diet, exercise, and genetics all play a role, as well as stress, sleep quality, and other factors. Together, these help your body move glucose from your blood into muscles, then burn that glucose for energy. But when your body can't effectively transport glucose into cells, you get beginnings of insulin resistance and high blood sugar, which can eventually become type 2 diabetes. The thing is, high blood sugar is both a cause and result of insulin resistance, a trap that you want to avoid at all cost. The general consensus is that HbA1c levels around 6.4% is considered pre-diabetes. In the United States, that's described as 125 milligrams per deciliter. This means your blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but not high enough yet to be diagnosed as full-blown type 2 diabetes. Time to take action, ASAP. This 6.4% HbA1c number means that 6.4% of the hemoglobin in your red blood cells is glycated. It has glucose attached to it, which essentially begins to rust your blood vessels and nerves if it stays that way for too long. At this stage, the body struggles to use glucose for energy, causing fatigue and weakness. From there, things can rapidly go downhill. For some people, nerve damage makes them go blind or their legs become numb or more painful from neuropathy. Unfortunately, some people lose their ability to walk, while others suffer complications like heart attack, liver disease, and a whole lot more. The point is, every person should be thinking about their blood sugar and taking proactive steps because the problem develops over time and it's very hard to fix once you've crossed that threshold. To any type 2 diabetics watching, please share your encouragement or advice with others who may be earlier in their journey. Leave a comment with any advice that may help them heed their early warning to learn from your experiences. We're all in this together. On a brighter note, at number six, we've traditionally been told that type 2 diabetes is a chronic progressive disease, meaning it is lifelong and steadily worsens over time. This was based on the idea that once beta cells in the pancreas are damaged, they cannot regenerate, leading to the saying, once a diabetic, always a diabetic. However, new research challenges this notion, suggesting that type 2 diabetes may be reversible. This involves not just reducing blood sugar levels, but also addressing the accumulation of fat in the liver and pancreas, which impairs insulin function. Studies like the 2017 analysis, beating type 2 diabetes into remission, indicate that total biochemical remission is possible. The researchers describe this as getting to the point where markers of type 2 diabetes return to normal and eventually tapering people off of medication. 
Of course, this should only be done under medical supervision. For more on that, watch our video titled, Can Type 2 Diabetes Be Reversed? And as it goes without saying that if you do manage to reverse type 2 diabetes, you can't return to the lifestyle that put you there in the first place. Next, new studies are also revealing new dimensions to the calories in, calories out debate. Calories in, calories out oversimplifies the complex mechanisms governing our metabolism, particularly concerning blood sugar. Of course, we'll get to the carbs, etc., but the really interesting new development is how the timing of meals can be as crucial as calorie intake. For example, intermittent fasting is emerging as a promising strategy. Studies have shown that limiting your eating window can lead to better weight loss, improved insulin sensitivity, and decreased liver and pancreatic fat. A 2023 clinical trial from the University of Illinois Chicago unveiled some staggering evidence for time-restricted eating. In this study, 75 people with type 2 diabetes were split into groups. One group followed an intermittent fasting regimen. They ate as much as they wanted, but only between noon and 8 p.m. The second group consumed 25% fewer calories, but could eat whenever they wanted. After six months, the intermittent fasting group lost significantly more weight than the calorie reduction group, despite eating more. Furthermore, they found it easier than the calorie restriction group. In another study, which lasted 12 weeks, participants who fasted for 24 hours twice per week experienced significant decreases in liver and pancreas fat. Cardiologists even see success with limiting that window to 12 hours for some patients, such as only eating between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Of course, limiting the foods we'll discuss next is going to make an even greater difference. And making sure you get plenty of nutrient-dense foods in general, like avocados and other healthy fats, berries, which enhance insulin function, or garlic, which combats inflammation associated with insulin resistance. Now, for some less helpful foods, many government agencies continue to recommend brown bread and brown rice, even to diagnosed type 2 diabetics. Quite frankly, this is outrageous. Sure, they may be marginally better than their white counterparts, but they still pose significant risk. Gliadin protein is less commonly discussed problem, and we'll discuss it in a moment. But first, let's get back to the basics. The glycemic index, or GI, ranks foods from 1 to 100 based on how quickly they raise blood glucose levels. High GI foods like white bread at 75 spike your blood sugar. Brown and whole grain breads range around 60 to 70 depending on the ingredients. Better, but still too high. Beyond GI, wheat-based bread contains gliadin, a protein that's known to interact with opiate receptors in the brain, mimicking hunger hormones. That's why people feel hungry soon after eating bread, so they eat more, and the whole problem gets exponentially worse. Likewise, gliadin is believed to increase intestinal permeability, causing leaky gut syndrome, damaging immune function, and contributing to brain fog, joint pain, atherosclerosis, and heart disease. Fermented sourdough bread may be a better option, as the fermentation process brings its GI down slightly, but again, it's not going to deal with the gliadin problem. So what can you do? If you have type 2 diabetes, you definitely want to exercise caution, test your blood, and eat to your meter. If you're going to eat bread, drinking lemon water beforehand is an interesting strategy. A 2020 study found that drinking lemon water before eating bread reduced the blood sugar spike by a whopping 30% compared to people who drank plain water and then ate bread. But realistically, it's best to stay away from wheat bread altogether. Experiment with breads made with non-green flours like almond or coconut flour. We have great recipes in our free ebook. Not only do those have lower GI values and avoid gliadin, they're chock full of important nutrients that actually improve blood sugar control and combat diabetes. 
instead of damaging your health, your morning toast can be a powerful ally. Plus, warm, homemade almond and pumpkin bread is a true source of joy when you get it right. Turning our attention to rice now. While brown rice is a tad better than white, it's still not the best choice for managing blood sugar. Quinoa is a better option with a medium GI of 53, accompanied with important nutrients including fiber, vitamins, and magnesium, which is crucial for glucose control and insulin sensitivity. But the real superstar is cauliflower rice. With a GI of just 15, cauliflower rice ain't gonna spike your blood sugar. Plus, it's got vitamin K, vitamin C, and other nutrients to support arteries and blood sugar control. Alternate breads and cauliflower rice can be tricky to get right. So we put our in-house chef and diabetes experts to the task, crafting the ultimate recipes to make life easy. Get our free downloadable PDF recipe book, Amazing Alternatives to Rice, Pasta, and Bread, which contains over 50 delicious low blood sugar recipes, as well as other comprehensive resources to help you prevent or fight diabetes. They're completely free. We'll leave a link to that in the description or visit diabetictalk.com. Okay, moving on now. At number three, let's debunk the myth that artificial sweeteners are a healthier choice. Many people turn to sugar substitutes, believing they're getting sweetness without the metabolic consequences. However, mounting evidence suggests otherwise. In fact, in May of 2023, the World Health Organization issued a shocking statement advising against the use of non-sugar sweeteners. This followed a mega-analysis of 283 high-quality studies which found that while short-term use might aid weight loss, longer-term consumption was associated with a 76% increased risk of obesity, a 23% higher risk of type 2 diabetes, and a 12% rise in premature death from any cause. Looking at specific sweeteners paints an even worse picture. Saccharin, once thought to be metabolically inert, was found to worsen blood sugar control in just seven days in a 2014 study. Aspartame, ubiquitous in diet products, was recently classified as possibly carcinogenic by the International Agency for Research in Cancer. It also suspected of contributing to neurological issues by disrupting key brain hormones. Even natural sweeteners like ethyritol, made from corn, have come under fire. A 2023 study linked high ethyritol consumption to nearly double the risk of heart attack or stroke, possibly due to increased blood clotting. The takeaway? Minimize added sweetness overall. Opt for whole fruits to satisfy sweet cravings and let your taste buds adapt. Your blood sugar will thank you. Moving on, at number two, it's vital to understand that high blood sugar doesn't always have noticeable symptoms. Many people with elevated blood sugar experience no symptoms at all. Others might notice subtle signs like fatigue, fluctuations in weight, thirst, and blurriness, but these are often ignored. This stealth aspect makes it crucial to think about prevention and best practice. Opt for nutritious foods, manage stress, and take steps to get quality sleep. And let's not forget exercise. Regular physical activity boosts your mitochondria, those cellular powerhouses that help your body use glucose more effectively, keeping your energy up and blood sugar in check. The goal? to stay ahead of high blood sugar and try to keep your body running as a well-oiled machine. And finally, the worst myth of all. Basketball are crew. What sparks the champion? Spark you and champion. Two sweeties. Breakfast of champions. No, cereal isn't the breakfast of champions. Despite the USDA food pyramid and marketing that still bombards us today, cereal is a minefield for blood sugar. We've discussed grains, gliadin, all the nasty stuff that comes with that. Making cereals is a disaster food in general. But there's also the question of timing. New research suggests that breakfast should prioritize protein and healthy fats, not carbohydrates. 
In a groundbreaking study by the University of Missouri, type 2 diabetics who ate a high-protein breakfast had significantly better blood sugar control. The benefits extended beyond breakfast too, with the high protein group showing better blood sugar control throughout the day, a phenomenon known as the second meal effect. Other studies show similar results that consuming protein or fat before carbs can significantly slow the blood sugar spike. So what should grace the breakfast table instead of cornflakes and puffed grains? Check out our video on what can diabetics eat for breakfast, the good and the bad. You might also like the video 13 incredible foods that reduce blood sugar, and we'll leave links to both of those in the description box below or click the images on the screen. And if you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to stay up to date with our new videos.